another shakeup at the top of U.S. soccer. Uh, any surprise that this announcement was made? No. Not, none whatsoever, Zubin, especially when you've got Volkswagen, Coke, and other sponsorships coming out immediately going right after U.S. Soccer and the Federation and Carlos Cadero. But I remember after the night that the United States men's national team failed to qualify for the World Cup, Scott Van Pelt on his Sports Center show asked me if I believed that this could be fixed. And I answered this. I said, my heart says yes, but my brain tells me no. Zubin, very few times in my life my brain has been correct. And yet here we are, March 12, 2020, and while Carlos Cadero steps down as president, that's fine. Who's the next leader? Where's the leadership going to come from? How is this thing going to move forward? That was 2017, and yet you're asking me a question about a federation in a 2,600-page legal filing saying that biological science is the reason why men should make more money than the women? You've got to be kidding me. And yet I still look in the camera right now and I ask everyone that is following this, what's the board of directors going to do? Now the onus is on you to find the right leader and to get this ship going forward versus backward. I just didn't think we'd still be having this conversation on March 12, 2020. But the reality is we are. And the fact is the women more often than not, are more visible and have been more successful for the men. But here we are having a sports center hit talking about what? Biological science? This is where U.S. soccer is at the present moment. It's well said. Biological science. In the filings, they just mentioned that the speed and the strength that the men play with, and that obviously set off a lot of alarm bells. So the next step for the women is this. On May 5th, there's going to be a huge trial that's going to take place, and the women are looking for $66 million in damages. A lot of legal experts are saying they're probably not going to be able to get that particular mm -hmm. amount as they fight for equal pay, gender discrimination, pay discrimination. But what should we be looking for as we move toward that date in court for that amount of money? Zubin, Wednesday uh, on my show, digital show on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and the ESPN app. It's called Banter with Taylor Twelman. And I mentioned that the, the crux of this situation is this. It is $34 million, the difference in the FIFA competitions for the men and women. That is not on U.S. soccer to file that. That is not on U.S. soccer to come up with that. That's a fact. That's not an opinion. However, their incompetency in the way they've covered this it's probably going to cost them more money. Now, the $66 million, that's in combination with other stuff. But U.S. soccer right now, on March 12, 2020, is offering the women the exact same contract as the men. Here's the issue. The men don't want to renegotiate their deal until the women do because then they're going to file it up and say, well, no, 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 we want 10 to 15 percent more. You want to put the nail in the coffin and knock this dead? Both representations of the men and women walk wide in, right into U.S. Soccer Federation. You negotiate the deal. That's equality. Not trying to one each other up, but that $66 million, $34 million, the $34 million is the most important number for the average viewer to understand. That is a FIFA decision. That is not a U.S. soccer decision. And anyone arguing that U.S. soccer is in charge of that, well, now you're opening up a whole other can of worms saying, well, wait a minute, U.S. soccer is now the responsible for FIFA's view of racism. That's not true. FIFA's had their head in the sand for the last 30 to 40 years. U.S. soccer doesn't have to pay that $34 million because FIFA is incompetent and looks at women unequal to men. That's a different kind of conversation, if that makes any sense. It does. Strong comments, as always, from Taylor Twelman. The last word goes to Molly Levison, a spokesperson for the women's team, who basically said, quote, this ridiculous argument belongs in the Paleolithic era. We'll wait to see what happens moving towards May. That's Taylor Twelman. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.